On a stormy evening, Emily was curled up with a book in her cozy living room, the rain pattering rhythmically against the windows of her secluded cottage. Her dog, Max, lay at her feet, occasionally lifting his head to the sound of thunder rolling in the distance. Just as she turned the page, the power flickered and went out, plunging the room into darkness. The only light now was the occasional flash of lightning, casting long, twisted shadows across the room. Emily's heart raced a little as she reached for the flashlight she always kept nearby. Turning it on, she decided to check the fuses, thinking maybe the storm had tripped a breaker. Max, however, refused to follow, whining and staying put. With a comforting pat, she left him behind and walked toward the basement door. As Emily descended into the basement, the air grew inexplicably colder. She chalked it up to the dampness, but couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. Reaching the fuse box, she flicked the switches, but the power remained off. As she turned to leave, she heard it, a soft, barely audible whisper coming from the dark corner of the basement. Emily spun around her flashlight beam cutting through the darkness. Nothing there but old boxes and forgotten furniture. Thinking her mind was playing tricks on her, she hurried upstairs, the sense of unease growing with each step. Back in the living room, she tried to settle back into her book, but Max was restless now, growling lowly at something unseen. Suddenly from upstairs came the sound of footsteps, slow, deliberate steps moving across the bedroom floor. But Emily lived alone. Frozen with fear, she listened as the footsteps stopped directly above the living room. Then, directly from above, a voice, clear, unmistakable, and impossible, spoke her name. Max barked furiously now, his eyes fixed on the ceiling. Emily's skin prickled with terror. She grabbed her keys and Max, not stopping to turn off the flashlight or close the book, and fled into the rainy night. Outside, she called the police from her cell phone, her voice shaking. When they arrived and searched the house, they found no sign of forced entry, no footprints, no evidence of anyone else being there. Everything was exactly as she had left it, except one chilling detail. In the dust on her bedroom floor, there were footprints, barefoot, as if someone had been standing there watching, waiting. The officer suggested maybe someone had been there before, leaving marks that she hadn't noticed. But Emily knew better. She never returned to the cottage alone, convinced that something unearthly had whispered her name that stormy night. 